Hey everybody, it's me, Liv. I'm going to be playing today with this Lisa Horton set, which is called Sunflower and Roses. This is also a 3D embossing and dye set. It does have a stencil too, I believe, but for me, I only got the embossing as well as the dye set. So I'm going to try actually four different techniques here, uh, just to show you what you could do with your embossing, especially if you're not someone who's huge on coloring or anything like that. So first up, I'm gonna go ahead and take out my small Gina K cubes. I'm actually doing it on the impress side this time, and I'm gonna just put an ink on various parts just to get the color down. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and emboss it. Now I'm actually gonna be embossing off camera, so you're only gonna see the finished product when I'm done with it. But once I've gone ahead and put that paper in, um, you can use really any type of paper. I actually find this is really good if you have these scrap papers that you don't know what to do with, um, because that way you can figure out exactly um, a way to use them um, that you wouldn't historically have. So as you see, when you do it like this on the reverse side, it actually embosses mostly on the background and leaves a shadow effect. Next up, I'm going to stamp this time on the um, raised side of the embossing. So I'm doing the same exact thing, just gonna go ahead and put that ink down all over, get that all isolated. Now you can do this many different ways. I wanted some variations on the greens and the reds and oranges. Um, I'd like to use my mini pads for something like this, but again, you can sponge it on if you want um, or spray it on. Might actually be a cool look. Maybe I'll try that next time. Um, so now that I have that all down, I'm gonna do the same exact thing that you saw me do, uh, but this time, because it is the raised part, you're gonna get a totally different effect on it. Now here again is where I mentioned, I'm gonna be using some scrap paper from my stash um, because I have way too much sometimes and didn't exactly know what to do with it. But as you see, you get a very different effect when you press it on the reverse side, the impressed side versus the popped up side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out with the dye so you can see what they look like. Um, so this is an awesome die because it cuts the entire piece and then you can manipulate it as you see fit when it's time to actually do it. Now here are the two finished pieces that we have. And now I'm just going to move on to your very traditional, put, go ahead and embossing it on some white paper and inking it up. So, you know, for the smaller areas, I do use a smaller little, um, brush that I have. It's kind of like a finger dauber, um, it, but this one's actually a triangle shape. I can't say I remember exactly where I got this from, but I'm going to go ahead and dot this all up and get this all inked up. So it creates a very lovely effect when you're doing it like this. This is really the traditional way most people do use this tool, so you can definitely use it this way as well. Now that I zoomed you through inking that all up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out later on. And finally, this is the last technique I'm gonna show you. I was actually watching one of my favorite mixed media artists, uh, Tiffany, and uh, she did this and I'm thinking, I have all these colored backgrounds I've done nothing with, with and this would look really great. So what I'm gonna gonna do is actually take out some black ink and I'm going to ink it on the raised side of the pad and then you will have these finished projects. So here are the four different techniques that we use with the embossing folder. I really love this one on the black. It just pops so beautifully. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you can try some new techniques with your 3D embossing pads and folders. I'm going to go ahead and leave two cards that I managed to get done. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day.